5G is finally here and this is going to be one of the most important videos especially if you're somebody who's an entrepreneur you're a business owner and you want to leverage the next 10 to 15 years on this internet mega wave that's happening in this particular video i'm going to be sharing with you seven different things i'm going to talk to you about the different types of business models that there are i'm going to talk to you about the different tipping points in the history of our time that have been game changing ideas i'm going to go back in time and project it into the future i'm going to tell you about what have been the disruptions in the last three decades uh, what has been the evolution of social media specifically what has been the evolution in marketing because marketing 20 years back is very different from marketing right now i'm also going to talk to you about the world of the future on where things are heading and there are a lot of amazing patterns around 12 different patterns that i've noted i'm going to share with you and finally i'm going to be winding up with the skills that you need if you want to be successful relevant in the future my name is Siddharth Rajshekar. I've been running digital businesses for over 10 years and I've been able to build a multi-million dollar business with only three employees and no office. And I've been able to crack this code because I understand patterns and trends in history and I've basically ridden those trends. So if you would like to be successful in the digital world as a digital entrepreneur, this is going to be the most important video for you. Take notes and let's get straight in. Awesome. So first, let me talk to you about the different types of business models. If you look at the traditional business models, there are seven, uh, five types of business models. You know, the first type of a business model is a manufacturing company. And if you're somebody who's been into manufacturing and making things, it invo involves people, place, infrastructure, and a lot of capital investment to really make this happen. The second kind of business model is a distribution based model where you're not manufacturing, but you're more like the trader. You're acquiring the products from different places and selling it with a margin. And that's perfectly fine. This also requires people, place, and logistics. The third kind of business model are the services based businesses like I used to run a digital marketing agency before with about 35 employees working for me and the interesting thing is I had to have a place to keep all the employees I had to like take care of them and it requires a totally different mindset to run and grow in a services business where you're selling your expertise and service now even if you're a doctor you also would fall in the service category because when people come for a consultation they're paying you for your time and they're paying you for your expertise the fourth kind of a business model is more where you're a franchisee let's say you have you bought a franchise a food franchise or a salon franchise or anything else where the, you basically bought a business in a box. You're not trying to figure things out on your own, but you are trying to really, uh, you know, implement what was already proven. Okay. In that case, that's another business model. And you have the fifth one, which is an aggregator-based business model, which is very popular right now, where, you know, the startup idea, you build an app and you connect the consumers and connect with the service providers, something like an Uber and Ola or, a, you know, an Amazon and stuff like that, where the ecosystem uh, is entirely driven through an application. But of course, to do this, it requires more marketing costs and stuff like that. Now, all of these industries that I mentioned over here are going to be benefiting in the 5G revolution that, that's happening right now because now people are going to be consuming more information. They're going to be consuming more data and everything's going to go at, at uh, 10x speed. Okay, so if you've been happy with you know 10 Mbps and 20 Mbps speed, uh, you need the, the new normal is going to be like 1 Tbps and stuff like that. Okay, so with uh, with this being said, these are the businesses that are going to be benefiting in terms of more people being able to reach out to them. But these kind of businesses are very hard to start unless you have a lot of capital. It's capital intensive, people intensive and stuff like that. So the best business model right now, if you see the model that I've taken up is a knowledge based business model where all I need is an internet connection. I need a laptop. I need a camera and I need my brains. Okay. When I'm selling my information in the form of information products, where there's no manufacturing, no shipping, no handling, no logistics, none of that stuff. And people are able to buy my products from all over the world. In other words, I've created my own digital ecosystem. So of all the different kinds of business models that I shared, this is one of the best business models to start, especially if you're somebody who has never done a business before, but you want to serve others with your expertise and knowledge that you have. And if you'd like to actually learn more about that in the description, I've given a link to my upcoming webinar. Please attend that and I'll decode the entire thing in 90 minutes Okay, when you attend my webinar. Now, now that I've actually shared with you the different kinds of business models, let's talk about what are the tipping points in history of the world uh, that have been game changing moments in humanity. Okay. And let's look at this. The first uh, tipping point, if you see, there are 10 tipping points I was able to note down. The first one is the agricultural. I'm going to rewind time and go back to like our great grandfather's time. And if you look at that time, it was all the agrarian age. And uh, even this is before technology, I'm talking in the 1800s and 1900s. Uh, you know, people who had large pieces of land and their wealth and their dominance is most of it's all revolving around how much money they are making and how much uh, through their farming and all of that stuff, uh, stuff like that. Okay, so agriculture has been the the first uh, game-changing concept in the in the world. 
uh, when the wheel was in invented uh, that changed the whole uh, the transportation industry then we had the steam engine that came in later on that changed the transportation if you look at some of the wealthiest people in the us in the 1800s 19 early 1900s were all people in this uh, people who were around manufacturing of iron and steel and steam engine and installing those uh, different uh, railway tracks all over the us and stuff like that so the multi billionaires were created during that time number 4 was that the printing press was a game changer because knowledge was uh, now accessible in the form of a you know of books and uh, you know information could go far and wide number 5 was electricity was a game changing concept i mean many of us including myself have been i was born into technology born into electricity not into the current technology but i was i was born into a world where there was already technology and and electricity but if you look at the great grandfather's time i'm sure many of you here would be able to relate that a world without electricity was a very different world and even now if you go to villages and stuff it's very different over there the telephone was a game changing technology uh, the radio was a game changing idea and television was a game changing idea in the Uh, late 80s and early 90s i still remember those star plus in the initial days and how i used to wake up in the morning and watch those programs and stuff like that now the thing here is all of these innovations have happened in the last 100 years the major innovations have happened in the last, last 100 years and look at this what we are experiencing in the last 20 30 years humanity has not experienced this in the last 4000 years let me explain like if you rewind time 200 years ago in india and you rewind time 4000 years ago in india the lifestyle that people were having 4000 years ago and 200 years ago pretty much the same there's not been like major changes but what we have experienced in the last 20 30 years is game changing okay and i'm so happy to be have, to have been born in the 80s so i could see i'm so glad that i saw the era where i grew up on the field i was grew up playing outdoors and i and i saw the technology come in and television come in all of us here you know those of you who have been around you know for for the last 20 30 years or 40 years uh, i'm not talking about the millennials and the next gen but i'm talking about those of you who have been born before the internet era and before the technology era you know what that world was like and now you know what this world is like so i feel very privileged and honored to have been born at the cusp of this technological revolution that has happened in the last 20 to 30 years and it's been amazing and if, and want just to continue on the mind map the, the internet being introduced in the 19 uh, like late 1990s early 2000s when facebook had uh, you know 2004 was facebook before that was myspace and orkut and all of that i'm coming to the social media part later this was a game changing idea and now we're looking at the mobile revolution and now what we're looking at is the tipping points is going to be like higher speed internet okay more specifically right now 5g now see from 3g to 4g uh not such a huge jump in terms of speed there has been a jump but then from 4g to 5g is going to be a 10x jump which means that it's going to really change the game for many people and it's going to change the game for businesses it's going to change the game for the way people look at things so it's it's going to open up a whole new world of opportunity especially in the space of ar vr augmented reality and many other things that i'm going to talk about later but the whole principle is this that whatever changes that you have seen in the last 20 years the principle is what's going to come in the next 10 years is going to be so much more than you might have ever thought about okay so the speed of innovation and the speed of technology and implementation of new ideas and disruptions that are going to happen is going to be on a totally different level so now that i've shared with you tipping points in history let's talk about the disruptions in the last 3 decades there are 15 disruptions that i was able to note down in the last 30 years what have been the disruptions starting with the first one is uh, the pcs you know when Uh, Microsoft launched uh, you know I still remember using Windows 3.1 back in the day during my school days and that changed the game in the floppy disk days okay that is one disruption home computing like computers coming home uh, internet as i already mentioned has been one of the disruption the last 3 decades movies have been a big disruption the way that movies are created the way that we watch movies everything has changed okay we used to be i still, still remember going to like big theaters during my school days there would be 2 300 people in those theaters and uh, we would like wait for those those shows and go now like the theaters are getting smaller and it's everything's getting on demand right so the way that we watch movies have been disrupted mp3 has been a disruptive uh, has been one of the most amazingly disruptive ideas you know going from vinyl to cd's 
I still remember, you know, downloading and uh, burning CDs and stuff using Nero burner and stuff like that during my younger days and copying CDs. And then Napster came and completely swept the the whole uh, music market. And uh, and MP3 was the outcome. And of course, Apple innovated. And today, Spotify, Apple, uh, you know, uh, you know Saab and all these different music apps. It has been the outcome of the MP3 revolution. Another revolution has been GPS. You know, imagine a, a time in history where we did not have uh, maps. Okay, we did not have Google Maps. We had physical maps, and that would have been so cumbersome. Thanks to Google Maps, we don't even realize the the impact of Google Maps, and not just Google Maps for GPS, but just GPS as a concept applied in other areas in in technology with satellites going up and and giving us the position on the planet on what you know what's happening in different parts of the world has impacted so many industries. Okay, and all of these are going to be accelerated by 5G. By the way, okay. Number six is currency. You know. I still remember the day that at home we would have a money box and keep the cash money at home. And then what happened the next, you know, we started to see uh, bank accounts start, you know, start to get open, you know, by large in the 1900s and 1990s. And then we saw the introduction of uh, credit cards and debit cards and plastic money. And then we saw crypto and stuff like that coming in. But now if you see the currency, like today, if you look at the world, not many people carry cash anymore. And demonetization in India has been one of those other, other game changing uh, uh, what do you say, uh, turning points in the history of our uh, nation where uh, after demonetization, people have a different view and outlook towards currency, okay? The other disruption that has happened is lasers. Now, I'm not talking about lasers like in the sci-fi movies and stuff like that. I'm talking about lasers. If you go into any shopping mall, any you know, market, right? All the scanning that happens on your barcode scanning all happens through lasers. Originally, lasers were... Uh, innovated or wanted to be created for the defense purpose by the US government. But later on now lasers are, are used in all different places. Even the scanning of your bags in airports, scanning of so many different things. Laser technology has been a game changing idea in the last uh, 10 years. Okay. Number eight is uh, psychedelics. I'm talking about uh, using of uh, drugs and stuff like that. There's innovations in medicine and drugs. That's one area. Uh, transportation. Uber. Uh, completely disrupting the, the transportation world. Uh, the way that cars, I still remember the days that I used to, uh, I grew up at a time where there were only ambassadors, okay? Uh, and then of course, Maruti 800 and then Esteem, Maruti 1000. And then now today, if you see the transportation industry in India has completely revolutionized. Number 10, I'm talking about the social media revolution starting from Orchid days, then moving into the you know, MySpace, which, got, which died and then Facebook. And now Facebook is... <laughs> has evolved into meta right now. And this is going through a major, major shift right now. Of course, Instagram and YouTube and everything else comes into play. Number 11 is travel has transformed. I, I remember in my school days, I used to travel in, in the trains and of course, even now, but now if you see train travel is still there, but the lower middle class and middle class are, travel, are flying right now all over India. And this is just the beginning of what's to come in the travel industry also. The mobile industry has also transformed. I remember the initial Nokia 8235 days and right now we are having the latest of the latest phones and it's getting better and better by the day. Now with 5G, that's going to be uh, taken to a whole new level. And where 5G is going to be playing a big role is in AI, ML, IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things. And we're looking at a gig economy. Uh, Today, people are talking about moonlighting, they're talking about all this stuff. But the whole uh, principle is the way the, pe the way people are working, the culture has changed, especially after COVID. COVID has been the catalyst to a completely transformed world. And now if you're seeing we are in the gig economy, people are willing to take up freelancing jobs. Uh, even in my case, I have a company with only three employees and no office, just a co-working space. I don't need to go to any office. I'm just working from home. And this is like the future of work. And if I have to really connect with my team, it all happens through Zoom. If I have to connect them with, with them in person, we would just set up a time for that. So the whole idea is I've been able to build my business with project-based freelancers and I pay per project. I don't have them on payroll. And this trend also is going to be it's a game changing idea, which is going to grow right now. And number 15 edu is education space. You know, education is, is changing like crazy. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is I really want to inspire you to become a digital teacher and a leader because our education system is also, there's a, there's a lag in it. You know, it, it requires a redefinition. You know, by the time something gets approved into the curriculum and gets approved, it, things will keep changing fast. So the lag time in the education system is so, so much that uh, it's not really catering to the new world and the future world. So how can we really cater to that future world is by empowering more and more people to become digital teachers and digital mentors or implementers who can really make a difference in other people's lives, not just based on uh, what knowledge they have, but about their practical experience and their experiential knowledge that they're sharing with others.
Okay, so these have been the disruptions in the last three decades. And if you're mind blown by this, just type MB in the chat box if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, okay? Now let's talk about the evolution of social media. I'm gonna zoom into this because social media ha also has had its, its evolution in the last you know, 20 years from 1990s to now 2022 and beyond. So 1990s, if you saw, it was a time where I remember chatting on MIRC, Yahoo Messenger, Hotmail, uh, MSN Messenger, and we had pagers that were introduced during that time and everyone felt it was really cool. And mobile phones at that time were like the brick phone, right? Which is very, very costly and expensive and stuff like that. So the, the way that people would communicate socially were using these different platforms. And then we saw the next era was uh, in 2000, early 2000, that was the time that I was doing my sound engineering and I remember those days clearly when Gmail started to get more popular, everybody had a Gmail account. Uh, we had Orkut that had launched at that time, Skype had launched, MySpace, Facebook in 2004, but it was not so popular in India until 2006. And then uh, YouTube was launched, WhatsApp, Twitter and LinkedIn, all these social media platforms launched at that time. And by the way, during this time, just so that all of you know, I was doing my sound engineering and I was actually looking at patterns and I was working on the mobile industry. I was doing testing on more than 30 to 40 different kinds of devices, right from the most basic phone to like the motor razor, which was a popular one at that time. And I was seeing how social media was being adopted into the main mass market uh, as a person working in a, in a mobile, uh, you know, organization targeting thousands of consumers, okay? And then 2010, we saw the disruptions. Now, Instagram came in, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, Telegram, Airbnb, Quora, uh, Google Plus that came in and, and it, you know, it, it vanished. And then Spotify, SoundCloud, Amazon, Udemy, Lynda.com. And these are just some small examples, but if you look at all of these major social networks, they got, they gained this pop, their popularity between 2010 and 2020. And that was the phase where 3G was introduced, okay? around that, that, that space, from 2G to 3G. And if you look at it, every time a next gen happened, like next gen of internet was launched, the next generation of innovations also came about. So from 2020, if you look at when 4G started to gain popularity, we saw like uh, Zoom, uh, Clubhouse and Discord, Twitch, uh, Steam, Epic Games, uh, Baiju's, all these different e-learning companies started to boom and the, the whole learning went to a, the whole new level compared to what it was in before in that uh, transition from 3G to 4G space. Okay, and then now we're looking from 2022 and beyond with 5G coming into place with the speed of internet going by 10X, I can see some major innovations happening in the knowledge space, in the technology space, in the space of augmented reality, artificial reality, you know, VR, virtual reality and stuff like that. We are gonna start moving more into virtual worlds as Mark Zuckerberg has already painted that picture of the metaverse in the future and that's the logical next step of where things are moving with 5g coming into play okay now the other point i want to share with, share with you is the evolution of marketing now because i'm a marketer uh, i've seen these different uh, generations of marketing evolve from 2000 early 2000 all the way till today because i've been in the digital marketing space since 2011 when i launched my digital marketing agency i was one of the first few people to do workshops all over india i've done more than 60 workshops across india and when I used to be teaching social media stuff back then and what's happening right now, there's a major shift, okay? And I'll tell you uh, what I've been able to observe as a pattern. See, the marketing of the 1990s was more like outdoor TV, uh, internet ads in a few places, and of course, newspaper, okay? These were like the main, main uh, channels for marketing outdoor ads. From 2000 onwards, we saw things like Google ads, long form landing pages, email marketing started to gain more popularity in this time, building an email list and so on. And I've been following some of the top internet marketers from 2000 itself. 2010, we saw the game changing. So social media came into place and I used to be teaching at that point of time, Facebook ads, I mean, sorry, just Facebook organic marketing, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn were the top three platforms. And then we saw an emergence of funnels, funnel building and, and webinars started to get more popular towards the end of, uh, you know, 2000, 18, 19, you know, I started to do webinars in 2017 itself, but 2018, 19, 20 have been the year when webinars started to get more popular, you know, in India. And then 2020 onwards, uh, what I'm seeing is things are gonna be moving more towards ecosystems. As the 5G connectivity and all this gets more, more steam, uh, I'm gonna see more and more people build their own platforms. Like I have my own platform called Internet Lifestyle Hub, uh, where I'm building communities, where people trust me and, uh, I'm creating my own small little island on the internet and I'm leveraging on all the bigger islands or the bigger continents like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all these different, these are big continents on the internet. I'm leveraging their 
uh, platforms to eventually bring them into my own oasis and my own digital island uh, where email is still going to be an important factor for communication and i also have multiple traffic sources so you need to be understanding that marketing in the in 2022 and beyond is about having multiple traffic sources facebook ads instagram ads youtube ads twitter ads and i'm talking about also having custom audiences and customer audiences loaded into your platforms to more uh, to market with more precision than trying to be generic. So this is like the evolution of marketing as you can see over here as what has happened in the last uh, last maybe 20 years. And the one principle I would like to share in this entire process is that if you have to if you have to like really sustain and grow in the future, do not be dependent on an external platform like a Facebook or a YouTube or an Instagram or, or whatever these platforms because platforms keep changing from time to time. The trends also keep changing from time to time. For example, in India, if you were a TikToker like three, four years back, you were, you were doing pretty good. But then once TikTok got banned in India, then what happened? Everybody had to move to Instagram and again restart from the scratch. So it's good to build your audience on these different platforms, but eventually have your own private network. Okay, Build your own ecosystem of your own. That's like the core message I want to share with you. Now coming back over here, let's talk about the, the world of the future. Okay, The world is going to become a 9 billion population in the next 10 to 20 years. Okay, And we are going to really see some amazing innovations. Some innovations that I can think of are things like self-driving cars. Already there's a lot of tech innovations happening in this space. And 5G and 6G is going to be a very uh, important factor for these things, you know, because internet is going to be used for tracking and communicating with satellites, all of this stuff. So the, the second area is going to be on 3D printing is uh, going to be one of the things of the future. It's already happening right now where you can 3D print organs of the body, you can 3D print clothes, you can 3D print pretty much anything. Okay, that's another industry to look for in the future. Uh, gaming is a multi, multi, it's going to become a trillion dollar industry. As is, we are seeing kids right now hooked into their YouTube channels or hooked on YouTube, looking at gaming channels and gamers. And uh, people are born in the 70s and 80s. They think, okay, gaming is just some fun. It is, it's not for adults, it's for kids. But you know what? Gaming is a serious thing right now and it is a multi-billion dollar industry. We're already seeing this. People are playing so many games on their phone, multiplayer games. And when, with 5G internet, Imagine people are going to be having so many multiplayer games and more advanced uh, worlds that can be created because the streaming speed being at like one TBPS and stuff like that. Okay, number four, I'm talking about metaverse, uh, which is going to, which is being built right now by everybody. Uh, Facebook uh, clearly has indicated that this is going to be their next focus point for the next many many years, and that's why they have renamed their company to Meta. Superfoods, we are going to see this uh, innovation happen in this space blockchain a lot of innovation in this space again connected to internet and technology uh, sustainable energy is going to be the talk of the town because everybody is looking at how they can make the world more sustainable we are going to talk about space travel again that's why elon musk is playing this game here uh, be it tesla be it spacex uh, number nine looking at uh, humanoids uh, neural link and how technology can interface with humans and in our bodies already there are a lot of tracking devices that are going into humans to track on what we do so we're going to see more of this uh, drones already happening in a lot of way right now drones are used for great videography visuals and stuff like that uh, even the defense are using drones for warfare so again all of these innovations that i'm mentioning over here are, are controlled by the internet 5g has a big role to play in all of these areas and number 11 i'm talking about nanotechnology uh, the smaller things that you can do i'm talking about even like uh, microprocessors or the like if you look at your uh, computer chips and stuff like that getting smaller and smaller and smaller uh, having more and more memory and uh, with you know every 18 months according to Moore's law technology doubles and and that's all has to do with the nanotechnology and we're looking at hydroponics and people you know now with space being less in the top cities and uh, people are looking at alternate ways to grow their food and stuff just using water and not the typical way there's another innovation that's happening over there so the things to come according to the future futurism uh, magazine i was looking at is uh, looking at eye control technology paper diagnostics uh, designer antibiotics by 2024 2023 ingestible robots smart clothing uh, photonics in space volcanic mining uh, if i have to go still further there's more in this by 2028 we're going to see like uh, yeah, volcanic mining uh, carbon breathing batteries uh, we're going to see things like spintronics revolution, super antivirals, diamond batteries, optogenics, nano feasibility, unhackable quantum internet, cheaper solar power. Okay, we have uh, biomimetic materials, 
by 2036 the next evolution of ai will happen 3d printing will be there in every home by 2037 and uh this is just the beginning okay and there's there's more to this yeah but there's more to this but i just want to share with you if you're blown away by this stuff just type mind blown in the chat box because uh these are the things to come in the next 15 to 20 years the reason I'm sh i shared this with all of you is because if you thought that the last uh, 10 years was like very disruptive or the last 20 years have last two to three decades have been disruptive in terms of technology the next 15 years you're going to see so many more disruptions and the introduction of 5g is that stepping stone because this opens up like a 10x speed and connectivity that allows uh, these new innovations to come about okay and uh, 6g by next year or the next two three years so every time the speed doubles like i remember the day when where i had to like dial up to the internet and hear that that uh, weird sound for the internet to uh, to connect where i should download music files at some 4 kbps and i used to feel really good about those days and and, and four or when I, when I would get eight kbps i would feel really good it's like double the speed kbps and here today we are living in a world we are talking about uh, like 10 mbps and you're very comfortable with 10 mbps but imagine if there's going to be 10 gbps okay or say 20 gbps that's what 5g is all about let's say we push it to 1 tb or 10 tbps in the next 10 15 years imagine the potential that's going to be there okay the possibility of where things are moving is, is going to be amazing so i want to like end this come to the last segment is what are the skills of the future considering that there are different kinds of business models. There are different tipping points in history that I've shared with you. The d disruption in the last three decades. Uh, social media is evolving right now. Evolution of marketing, world of the future. What should be the skills of the future? If you see what are the most important skills, if you want to stay relevant in the future, is number one is uh, definitely your communication skills. Okay, because uh, why communication? Is because the creators of content are going to be the ones who are going to rule the future. You know, people onto YouTubing, who are into podcasting, anyone who is communicating their ideas in a very powerful way, uh, in the form of either video and audio, they're going to have an edge over others because of the internet allowing them to do stuff like this. The internet and speed is going to be happening at a much faster pace. So the consumption is going to be more, the, the way, rate at which people share is going to be more. So any question is, are you going to be a creator or a consumer? Okay. When you create more than you consume, you'll get rich. So it's better to put yourself on this game so that you can improve your skills in creation and communication. Uh, copywriting is also a very important skill, using words to communicate effectively. Uh, I'm talking about lead generation also as a very important skill as a business owner in a knowledge business. How do you attract the right kind of people coming to you? Number five is digital selling. How do you sell through videos? How do you sell through funnels? How do you sell through webinars? How do you sell one-to-one? -one? There are so many different ways to sell. And if you can sell your idea, in the form of content like i'm what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to sell you the idea that uh, the internet revolution is going to be a game changer for every single industry and if you are not taking this seriously you're going to be you're going to be stone age okay so i'm selling the idea so i'm trying to sell you ideas through youtube and of course i'm also i love selling my products i still love selling my memberships that's a part of my whole business equation and process and the best part is with the internet with video with automated processes like this like you may be watching my video right now i may be spending time with my kids and playing a ps5 with my son uh, while you're still watching this video that gives me time leverage and uh, that's how i've been able to build a business a multi-million dollar business without any office and just a few employees leveraging automation videos and stuff like that so once you master digital selling you can duplicate yourself and you can create like uh, you can create like 24 by 7 impact and income for yourself and your business if you learn the art of how to do this and number six is i'm talking about tribe building okay i believe that your relationship with your customers has to begin at the point of sale it cannot end at the point of sale in my case i built a community of over 15,000 people right now paid members in my community that i nurture on a continuous basis inside my private networks and we have different initiatives to activate them to help them get whatever results that they want so one of my superpowers is tribe building. How do you keep people together in the digital world and also take it to the offline world? And these six skills that you see here is what's going to make you relevant in the future. Whatever is happening in the 5G space or the 6G that's going to be coming, that has no impact, okay? It has no impact unless you are able to step into deploying these different skills into yourself, okay? In other words, uh, people who are not building the skills for the new world they are going to get lost in technology and they're going to get lost in as a consumer but what you want to do is as a business owner you want to be on the other side where you're the creator and you are providing tangible solutions to solve problems using the internet and if we can do this collectively we can make a huge difference in our country in our world in our economies and stuff like that 
So I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is uh, one of my few videos where I've gone in depth to share why the world, what is, world is going. If you want more stuff like this, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got a lot more videos that I've uh, uploaded in the last three to four years. You can go and watch even my older content. All of my content is evergreen to the point. No fluff, no BS, point shooter style information like this that can make a difference to you and your life and your business. And uh, yes, stay tuned. And I look forward to sharing more information like this in the future. All the best. God bless. Let's go!